All right, so I'm in California with Marquez from MKBHD. Apple has just announced the latest features coming to iOS. Google a couple of weeks ago announced the latest features coming to Android. So we're just sat here thinking there's never been a better time to decide who's doing it better. We're gonna go through the 10 different aspects of the smartphone experience and see who wins more. It could be a tie. Um, Oh my end. god, yeah, we should have done 11. Yeah, <laughs> of course. just saying. Okay, so let's start with the display. Do you think the iPhone's display has anything special about it? Or do you just think it's like a pretty average Android phone screen with a thicker border and a kind of weird looking notch? It's funny, the, the phone has so many things that are best in class and then weirdly below average. Like as far as screen to body ratio, it's decent, but then it has the biggest notch you would ever see if it was an Android phone. It's pretty much the only phone in today's market with a notch. Exactly. It's probably the smoothest 120 hertz display that I use in a phone. That's interesting. Because of the responsiveness and the touch sample refresh rate. So do you put this on the same level as a Samsung screen, like the S22 Ultra? Very close. I think the S22 Ultra barely beats it in some things like brightness yeah. and sharpness. Yeah. But if you're just going like, is it a great A plus screen? Yes. To me, the S22 Ultra screen, like I'm holding them side by side, that feels like a different class. It is. When I'm in a bright scenario, like the sun is beaming down on it, this is actually so bright that it feels bright. Yeah. Whereas this is like, okay, it's visible. Right. There are some edge cases where you notice the difference. And speaking of edge, the little bit of a curve around the edge, yeah. you talked about the way it feels. That's something I kind of prefer the flat of the iPhone, to be honest. So I give it really? a little bit of extra credit there. But it's it's sharp. It's like your hand is curved. The phone... I, I hear that a lot, but I weirdly kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. I understand it from an aesthetic thing, but I... Uh. Yeah. But it leaves a dent in my hand. <laughs> S, this, I'm holding an S21 Ultra, which is somewhere in between the two. And yeah. I think that was a nice, happy medium. If we just go all of Android, iPhone gets an A+. But if we're just going against Samsung, it's trailing by a little bit. OK. So it's up to you. I'll leave so, it up to you. OK, we'll call it a draw. That sounds like a draw to me. Yeah. So number nine is performance. And on paper, it kind of seems like a really easy one. Because if you just run like Geekbench multi-core benchmark, the iPhone scores higher and draws less power. Even if you're a gamer and you don't care about those numbers, you get games earlier and those games seem to run smoother. In your mind, is there any nuance to this at all or is the iPhone just better performance? If you're counting performance as smooth feel, frames per second, that type of thing, and overall power efficiency, yeah, the iPhone is is a clear winner in my mind. Do you think the iPhone even beats out potentially like gaming-oriented Android phones? Well, it depends on if the game you play is on that platform. Yeah. If the performance is great, but you can't play the game you like, is it actually a good performer? I guess the one saving grace for Androids is they do come with a lot more RAM. Like this is the top-end iPhone 13 Pro Max, six gigs of RAM this comes with up to 12. In your experience, does that contribute anything to like the multitasking experience or does it not matter? Three gigs of RAM on an iPhone feels like eight gigs of RAM on an Android phone sometimes <laughs> because of the way they just fill up memory and aren't as efficient. So yeah, you can multitask more on a Samsung phone because of the extra RAM, but also just because there's features that let you do more. Do you find you do that? Like I know Android has split screen multitasking technically. Yeah. You do use it? No, I don't. Oh, you don't use it? <laughs> I yeah. don't personally use yeah. it that much. I, I don't use it either. I would yeah. consider myself like a fairly hardcore user. And even then, just having picture in picture is about as far as my multitasking goes. I gesture back and forth all the time, copying and pasting. I yeah. know I can multi-window, I just never do it. Okay, moving on to battery. And so this is my experience, right? So iPhone 13 Pro Max has got the best battery life of all the big phones. And iPhone 13 Pro has the best battery life of all the compact phones. Does that mirror your experience? There's two phones right now with 6,000 milliamp hour batteries. And if I put the ROG phone at 60 hertz, yeah. it is a better battery technically than the iPhone at 60 hertz. But yeah, generally I found that this is world-class battery. 13 Pro, also world-class battery. Mini is in the equation too. Not as great, but then you're comparing it to other phones that are small. You're comparing it to miniature phones at that point, right? Yeah, which, which is... doesn't have great batteries anyway. Mm. So yeah, top of the class as far as battery for sure. So there's another side to battery, which is the charging. How much do you think that factors into the, the battery experience? Does it matter to you? To me, it matters a lot. It right. changes the way I use a phone. If it charges quickly, and I know I can charge quickly, I don't mind it dying quicker, because I know I can plug in for five minutes and be fine. Okay. It's a different type of peace of mind. It's, it's, it's interesting because for me, I would much rather my phone doesn't die in the first place. Oh yeah. And this is a phone where I can actually trust that. Mm. Like on the way here, like I took a flight from UK to US. So I was moving back eight hours, which meant that I effectively had a 24 hour day 
and this still had 20% left at the end of that. And so at that point, like, isn't fast charging just making up for a lack of capacity in the first place? So if I could only pick fast charging and mediocre battery, mm. or great battery, mediocre charging, I would pick great battery, mediocre charging. Right. But if you don't have a great battery, you better have good charging. And a lot of Android phones have incredible charging. The iPhone can charge decently quickly, not like super fast, but I still put it as the winner in the category just because the, the baseline battery life is so good. Okay, so the battery award goes to the iPhone. Okay, this is where it gets kind of juicy. So we want to talk about the cameras and we'll start with photography and then videography can be the next section. Okay. So I guess a good way of kind of getting to the meat of it is if you had to pick one phone for the rest of your life to take photos with, would it be an iPhone? Would it be an Android? Yeah, it would be the iPhone. It to take photos? Android. Yeah. And it's only because there's a couple small nuances within that question, which is you take photos from the camera app. You also take photos sometimes inside of another app. That is Instagram true. Instagram stories, TikToks, video shooter, Snapchat, whatever you're doing. Um, and all those things typically behave really well on the iPhone. Mm. Now, if I knew I was gonna go to uh, a national park and I was gonna take a lot of bird photos, believe me, I'd take one with more zoom than the <laughs> iPhone's got. But if you just wanna like blanket everything for the rest of your life, you can only take one for photos, it still would be the iPhone. That actually surprises me. Because uh, in my mind, I would pick a Vivo, a Samsung, or a Pixel. I know they kind of over-process photos, but in my mind, to actually achieve what we think is a natural look, you almost need that over-processing. And so like, if you've used Vivo's X80 Pro, I don't know if you have, um, that has this, this option called Zeiss Natural Color. And these things are often like just marketing gimmicks, but when I used it, I genuinely thought, wow, that is what my eyes are seeing for one of the first times ever. Yeah. Let me throw a couple extra variables at you for camera. Go on. The shooting experience of, you know what, there's something I want to take a picture of. Let me just get the photo right now. Do you trust that camera? I've had some issues with pixels where I take a photo and I put the phone back in my pocket and when I check it the next day, that photo was never saved. <laughs> like that just doesn't happen on the iPhone. And there's a couple, you know, little things like that that make me go, yeah, one thing for the rest of my life, I'm gonna take the, the most stable, reliable one too. Do you think the iPhone takes the best end results? No. Uh, I think it's very close, but I think you could argue for Samsung's S22 Ultra. I think you could argue for Pixel in some shots, yeah. especially in darker environments. And I think you could argue for iPhone in some shots too, with the Ultra okay. Wide too. So in that case, it'd be more of a tie, but factoring in the camera experience. The whole camera experience. Goes to the iPhone. Yeah. Interesting. So for me, the fun side of Android cameras is actually a factor. I used to love the days where Huawei would unveil a new phone and it always had this crazy cool gimmick, like a super long zoom camera or incredible night mode. And for me, that would be like a, it'd be like a toy that every time an opportunity presented itself, I would take out my phone and be excited to see what it could do in that situation. You get a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. You don't really get that with the iPhone camera. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? It kind of reminds me of sports where the most boring team to watch is often the best one. Okay, so then moving on to videography, I feel like the answer is probably even easier than for you. The iPhone is uncontested videos. Yes. Yeah. You know, I do occasionally slip in shots from other cameras into my videos. The most often I get away with it is the iPhone. I've shot entire videos on the iPhone. No problem. My phone takes that one too. It's, it's actually not looking good for Android right now. Yes, yeah, scoreboard's, <laughs> scoreboard's pretty lopsided. <laughs> it's been a bit of a hot topic recently, um, eco-consciousness. So I guess, in your opinion, if a user is eco-conscious about the planet, which phone is a better option, iPhone or Android, on average? Well, there's a whole Android spectrum. Let's say you go all the way to the Fairphone, right. which is also an Android land. Mm. It's not even close. I, I guess the, the fair comparison would be iPhone flagship versus average Android flagship. Okay. So we take like a, a rounded average of the Sonys, the uh, Xiaomi's, the Samsung's. Yeah. So I know this for sure. So Apple's devices right now on average use about 20% recycled materials. So that is, that is the most in the industry right now. That's good. And they also have the most forward goal of being carbon neutral. So they want to be carbon neutral by 2030. I think most other companies are more like 2040, 2050. So, from what I've seen, Apple is ahead in that, except for those fringe cases like Nokia does a lot and then Fairphone does a lot. If you're genuinely concerned about the planet, buy a used phone. Yeah. Yeah, or a refurbished one. Yeah. But this one goes to the iPhone. All right, so just before we get to pricing, which I think is probably the big one, we've got three categories about the software itself. 
So I want to start with software reliability. So in my experience, this is not like a magic phone that just works all the time, like some people say. Like there I've is had, no such thing. Yeah, I've had bugs, I've had glitches, I've had, you know, the, the screen dials down its brightness quite a lot when it gets hot. Uh, I have bugs with all kinds of phones. So yeah, yeah if we're talking just the iPhone, um, I know specifically uh, it likes to to stop wireless charging when it gets kind of warm. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of annoying. I guess it has to do that for safety reasons. But there's a bunch of little things in the software. Um, occasionally, the settings app will just crash. I'll open it and it'll just disappear. I I've guess when, when apps crash, they just disappear. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, that's too bad. Like Android will tell you, like give you an error message or something. But no phone is perfect, so I guess that's that's sort of the baseline you're working with. Would you say the iPhone is like equivalently reliable versus Android, or would you side with one over the other? It kind of goes in waves. I think right now iOS is pretty stable. And that compares to Android? Yeah, so let's go Samsung, for example, have been using an S21 Ultra for like a year and a half. Um, very stable phone. I feel like this is slightly off topic, but why not the S22? Um, a couple tiny things. The vibration motor is so weak on that phone, I was missing calls and notifications. Do you not have that problem? No. Yeah, I miss the way, like this phone sits on a desk and like vibrates and I hear it on the desk and pick it up. Yeah. That one, I just miss things all the time. Little thing. Yeah. But basically the same experience everywhere else on the phone. And I was like, let, let me just stick with the one that works. Slightly less screen curve on the side. It's so bizarre you choose to use last year's phone because it works yeah. better for you. It's a whole year old. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I, that's, that's <laughs> just my choice. No, it's good. It's okay. really good. Matte black everything, by the way. Yeah. Good design. You talk a lot, though, actually, about the camera being more reliable on the iPhone. It's quick to shoot. So there's some where they're a little less consistent. I'll open the camera app the first time, and it'll open up right away. It takes a shot. Yeah. And then a week later, I go to open up the camera, and it goes, mm, let me think about that for a second. And then it opens up. Yeah. It's just those little things that I noticed. But just in regular apps, you've done a lot of the side-by-sides. You can see the way they behave. Yeah. They're yeah. very similar. So yeah. OK, so, so we'll, give, we'll give reliability a draw. OK, so then software features. This is kind of a broad category. So obviously, both OSs do pretty much everything you'd want to. But the question here is, does one OS do something that the other one just cannot match? What things does iOS do that Android is just not there right now with? Not a lot. I mean, there's, there's a couple things where you'll just dig into the settings and find stuff in Android world that does not exist in iPhone world. Mm. And across the board, there are all kinds of features in specialty phones, gaming phones, yeah. all sorts of stuff that you will just never find in an iPhone. So that's the way I look at it. Right. Are there things in iPhones that don't uh, show I guess, up yeah, like I'm thinking more like AirDrop, right? People see that as a, a necessary feature. Sure. FaceTime, a lot of people see as irreplaceable. Oh, interesting. You've got SharePlay. You know, a lot of people love the fact that you can, especially now with iOS 16, you can send a message to someone and they can jump into a SharePlay with you. Yeah. That's pretty convenient. But I guess the caveat with a lot of iPhone's cool features is that they're further locking you in to more yeah. Apple products. There are lots and lots and lots of features in the Android world that are very important to a small number of people. And then there are iMessage, FaceTime, AirDrop, things like that in iPhone world that are pretty important to a lot of people. A smaller number of features, but like, does Samsung DeX matter to you? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> does does pass-through charging matter to no, you? No. Right, but like there's a, an endless list of those things that you can mm. find on certain Android phones that would tilt it in Android's favor for sure. Yeah. But there's these massive pillars on the iPhone, a small number of them, mm. that make a compelling case. It's a, it's a new way of thinking about it. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, you probably can't call a winner in this category. One of the key advantages that Android used to have is customization. But, you know, you could argue that Apple is catching up with that. You know, especially now with iOS 16, all that lock screen stuff. You know how, like, a lot of people think that smartphones are kind of coming to a plateau, mm -hmm. right? If Apple is in this kind of mindset of, we'll wait for other companies to do stuff, we'll do it later, but we'll do it better, does that mean that when both OSs reach their final kind of mature stages, that Apple will actually be ahead? Because with each feature they've integrated, they've really taken their time and done it properly. It feels like uh, there's always going to be a bleeding edge that Apple's not going to really dabble in. Mm. You know, between the, the two assistants, so you've got Siri on iPhone, you've got Google Assistant on Android. Yeah. I think unanimously, most people would say Google Assistant is better between the two. Like, it's faster, it can do more, it's more intelligent. But how much do you use it, the Assistant? Uh, I use it all the time for a couple key things. Taking notes, setting timers, shopping list. I ask it in the morning every day what the weather and news is going to be, stuff like that. Not, not that Siri can't do that, but there's a good amount of stuff I use it for. 
Um, but are we taking averages? Because we we've got, let me see, Cortana is available, <laughs> Alexa is available, Bixby is available. <laughs> but I guess all those phones are Google Assistant too, so yeah. I guess, yeah, I give that, that edge to so, so you never actually use Siri? No, I, I very rarely use Siri. Oh. I accidentally trigger Siri more than I use Siri. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Siri. You know, sometimes I find when I'm cussing out Siri, he actually goes, hmm? You yeah, know? they just perk up like, oh, what did you say? <laughs> yeah. Never mind, Siri. Do you have any kind of hot takes on the new features that Google announced for Android 13 versus the new features that Apple announced for iOS 16? So the, the one thing about customization that we're arguing, like the iPhone is catching up. Yeah. The lock screen widgets, it's better than an Android. Okay. It's better. That's a pretty hot take. It might be a hot take. You know, Android has had widgets forever. Yeah. And so there's endless customization with widgets. But this like late approach we've talked about with Apple where they come in late but do things really well, mm. suddenly lock screen widgets, if you're into that, looks better on the iPhone. Okay, so you're thinking it's better from a, a, a visual perspective. It's not that there's more options or it's, anything like it's, that. Yeah, it's, it's consistency, it's, it's mm. visual, it's aesthetics, it's the way you customize it, it's simple and easy to understand. Yeah. If I tried to hand this phone to my mom and said, add a lock screen widget, yeah. go, like that would, that's very different. <laughs> so that sort of thing, I, I sort of, maybe that's a hot take, but I give the, uh, the iPhone the edge there. Mm. But yeah, overall, a lot of good features coming out of both camps. Cool, so we'll call that category a draw. So then the final one about software is about software support. And this is another one of those where on paper, Apple just kind of takes it away because you get five years of updates. You know, the closest competitor is Samsung, which does four. And then after that, it kind of falls to three and two and then sometimes one in those kind of ugly cases. So what's your take? I think that's, that's kind of it. There isn't really any other nuance to it. Like how you like your software updates. You like to be advanced. You, hopefully they download quickly. Like, no, I just want to have the latest update. I don't really care. So. That one's pretty straightforward to me. Okay, so yeah. that one goes to iPhone. I guess there's one potential saving grace for Android, which is even though they have less first party support, they do have better community support, right? You've got the custom ROM community, modding, forums, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the thing, right? Yeah, so when I started my YouTube channel, it actually started because the phone I got first was not as good as I wanted it to be. And so I basically devoted my entire life to trying to understand how to hack it, to make it better, to overclock it and all these sorts of things. But as smartphones have gotten better, they kind of don't need it. The fact that you still can is cool for some, but it's some. Yeah, yeah, probably a shrinking minority. Okay, so the last thing is pricing. And it's obviously a bit of a tough one to kind of blanket because yeah. Android's iPhones has lots of different price ranges. But I guess we could boil it down to value, right? Which one do you think, if any, is better value for the money? I think some of these you want to just average things out, but in price, it really is just about choice. And in the Android world, there is simply more choice. If you care about value, I can name three or four Android phones with spectacular value. Mm. If you care about, well, if you don't care about value, we can give you the highest end Android phones in the world that cost $1,500. Or get a caviar phone with 55 diamonds on the back. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> to answer the question of like which one can give you the best value if you search for it, it would be Android. Yeah. Because at the budget end, like a Poco phone, for example, like $250. Yeah, you can go way down. Yeah. Or you can go, go like, you can just settle, you can go Pixel 5 or 6a. Mm. Or you can go like 700, 800 bucks. We can go Fan Edition S21. You can yeah. go anywhere in there. Just out of curiosity, like how good value do you think the latest iPhone SE is? That's their kind of lowest end phone right now. Yeah. The lowest end phone for them is their best value, naturally. Yeah. It's competitive for like one of the best values, but <laughs> value is very much up to what you care about in a phone. So if I care about FaceTime, iMessage, camera, that's a great value phone. Mm -hmm. If I care about Here's a couple games I want to play. I need 120 hertz and I need a big battery. Yeah. SE is a terrible value for you for that same price. Yeah. So, options. <laughs> options. Okay, yeah. Pricing's a tough one. So, call that a draw. Oh, wait, no. No, we're calling that an Android. Call that yeah. an Android. Yeah, we'll call that an Android. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired. It's like, <laughs> what time is it now? 11.20. Okay. Yeah. The iPhone does significantly win more categories than the Android, but obviously that's not the full story. It's very much a personal decision. That decision ultimately comes down to what the person who's gonna go get the phone 
actually cares about. There are objective winners in some of these, and then there are very subjective winners in mm. some of these too. Like photography, you are outright iPhone. I'm actually outright Android. Yeah, it is. But yeah, yeah. Um, no, thanks for this. This was, uh, this was really fun. Yeah. So I'm just here from the editing desk, and yeah, basically, we really, really, really wanted to not waste this opportunity. Like, we wanted this video to happen. That's why it's kind of so late. That's why the lighting kind of sucks. But, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you did.